getting into the later installments of the Yakuza Papers series of films is that by the time of Part 4, which we're covering today, Kenji Fukusatsu has gotten into a stylistic groove when it comes to the into this series of films and what they are, what they look like, what they sound like, and how their action is presented. So, to a certain degree, when it comes to discussing them, stylistically, we're covering a lot of the same ground that we would be, we'd be in earlier films. So, here we'll be focusing a little more on the plot and narrative beats. Not super in-depth, but kind of going over important stuff. The good news is, by this installment of the series, we've pretty much set up the players, where they're coming from, what they're fighting over, and why. We are building off of the gang war that started in the last film, and if you've seen the last one, you understand their grudges, who the good guys, who there can be said to be any good guys are, and who the bad guys are, and there are definitely plenty of bad guys. In Part 4, the gang war that started in Part 3 has escalated dramatically, and as of the shootout in the conclusion of the last part, we've switched primarily, or rather the Yakuza have switched primarily from their weapons used from using knives and uh, swords and other stabbing weapons to guns. In the last p three films, knife attacks were the tactics of choice. And you got lots of, you know, stabbings and blood spurting and occasionally amputations. Here, everyone's got guns, no one's afraid to use them, and the guns are also poor quality, so they don't aim very well, and they're... frankly, no one's a good shot with them. And thus, civilians are getting caught in the crossfire. This means now the police are much more heavily involved. I'm not sure why they weren't more actively involved earlier. We saw them on occasion when people got arrested, but here they're definitely playing a role. The gangsters aren't just killing each other. Their people are getting killed. Civilians are getting killed, and so the people won't stand for any... The benign neglect's the wrong term, but the level of an action the police had before. Similarly, the Tokyo... Uh, Olympics, the 1964 Tokyo Olympics are coming up, and we're in Hiroshima, people are going to come to the memorial, and so we have to clean things up for the tourists. So that further motivates the police for to engage in a crackdown. Shozo Hirono, once again played by Bunta Sugawara, remains in the forefront for most of the film. However, because Shozo is the boss of his own family, he's no longer the active participant in the violence that he was in earlier films. Here, he's much more of a political figure and operator, trying to keep his family alive and intact in the midst of the war raging through Hiroshima. Ironically, this should put him in the position perfectly to realize that the Yakuza Code of Honor that he's hewn to throughout the first three films, while everyone in positions of authority has ignored it, is a complete lie. He doesn't. In fact, Hirono ends up back in prison in this film, bookending the series, where he started off in prison during film one. During his time in prison, the guards rub Hirono's face in the fact he has a better cell, better clothes, and better food than the rank and file of his or any other Yakuza family who ends up the same prison would get, and he denies it. And it is clear to him it's that he's getting better quality food than and accommodations than he had in the first film, but he could probably argue that he first film was post-war, and things have gotten better now as the economy's gotten better. Still, not only does Hirono deny it, he, but he cites the Yakuza code throughout his denial, grabbing hold of it like Linus trying to save his security blanket from Snoopy. It really shows how much the character of Hirono has changed and how he's been corrupted by his rise in the ranks. He left his family, that he was in, in the first film, to start his own, as a rejection of his former superiors and how they treated him and how they treated their underlings that he was going to run his Yakuza family in a fashion to treat them with respect, and to play the political game to keep his subordinates alive. And indeed, they don't suffer any severe losses until Hirono is in prison, so he certainly succeeds in that regard. Yet it feels like time and the politics of the Yakuza made him blind to his understanding of why he started his own family in the first place, and what it will mean to his family now that he's no longer in a position to protect them. There is one last installment in the series appropriately titled Final Episode, and next time, we will see how this all wraps up. That said, I'll say, you could end the series right here, and it would have a satisfactory conclusion. The Yakuza can no longer act as they did before. Society won't let them. They must become a part of the rest of society as, instead of being in their own separate world, or at least find a way to more peacefully coexist with each other so they can 
work behind the scenes and in the shadows, as opposed to being more violent and thus ending up being more in the forefront. Once again, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe to this channel. Subscribe and get you notified when future episodes come out. And liking lets me know that you enjoyed the episode. The video on the right will be of the previous episode of Nintendo Power Retrospectives, if you want to go see what I reviewed previously that on that show. And the video on the left will take you to the previous episode of Breaking It All Down, while well, you'll get to see what I covered there. And below that will be a link to my Patreon page if you wish to back the show. Backing the show can get you mentioned in the credits, and also, depending on your level of support, you can determine what I do future Let's Plays of on Breaking It All Down and what else I review on that show as well. So go ahead and click on that and back the show. Also, backing the show helps me get the show out more often and improve the production quality of the show, which is good for everybody. Once again, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.